Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar Wednesday. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Stephen Phelps, and I am the marketing director here at Acumen. And today we'll be covering time and attendance for Sage 300. In this presentation, we brought in Dan and Aaron from Manusonic to demonstrate devices that can simplify your time and attendance, improve payroll accuracy, and enhance your workflow pr productivity. Uh, but before we begin, please note that today's webinar is in listen-only mode. And if you have any questions, then please use the chat option and we'll answer near the end of the presentation. Uh, we have a lot to cover today, so I will now pass it on to Dan. Uh, hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Papacon. Constantino. I'm with Manusonic and I uh, have uh, joining from joining us from our team, Aaron Zabudski. Um, and so I'd like to start off, um, this is a two-part presentation. I'm going to do a bit of a PowerPoint for you. I'll keep it as, as uh, short and as possible. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a PowerPoint to talk about the different functionality and features and modules in our system. And, um, and then I'm going to switch to uh, demonstrating the software. So we'll go through a quick demonstration of the software and then we'll have some time for questions and uh, answers at the end of, uh, of the presentation. So uh, before I begin, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about some of the problems that we solve for our customers with regards to uh, time and attendance and scheduling. Um, first one is buddy punching or time theft. Um, uh, there's, uh, you know, a lot of that going on these days with employees not, not being accurate with their time, um, you know, by having a, a time clock system, um, you're able to capture exactly the, uh, the, the punch in and punch out of all the employees and, and capture the exact time of employees uh, when they're at work. Um, Another one is um, for uh, some, some companies, they're having their employees uh, enter manual uh, time cards. Uh, these are uh, generally written by hand. Uh, um, they may not be accurate. Um, they uh, may not include the, uh, the appropriate times that the person uh, showed up or left. Um, and, uh, and then these paper time cards have to be submitted to their managers, reviewed manually, and Rekeyed into some sort of spreadsheet or uh, into a payroll timesheet. Um, errors uh, due to uh, manually keying in this information uh, into payroll. Uh, that's uh, often a, an occurrence when you're when you're not using an automated system. Um, the time off, the time off management, um, you know, generating accruals. So our system uh, keeps track of all uh, time off requests and approvals, and it uh, accurately tracks how much time someone has been uh, has accrued, how much uh, time they have available, um, and how much time they've requested uh, for the future as well. So keeping that accurate as well. And then um, allocating time for those uh, companies or organizations that are having their employees allocate their time to projects or jobs or, or work orders or systems capable of, of having employees allocate their time to, to these jobs and projects. Um, and this gets them accurate time uh, associated with the jobs um, that they're working on. So uh, I'll talk just a little bit about uh, what the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to talk a little bit a little bit about the uh, time clock hardware that we uh, that we offer. It's a, a biometric device. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, employee scheduling and uh, shift management. Um, uh, then uh, we'll talk a little bit about our timesheet entry, how employees can log in and also uh, enter time in a, a web-based entry system. Um, we also have uh, our mobile and tablet apps, um, and I'll talk about some of the features of that. And then also we'll look at the uh, functionality of the employee portal. Employees can log in and do certain things about their time. Um, and then uh, some of the functionality with regards to uh, that pre-payroll processing, like overtime and, and stat and some of the other calculations that you may have to do prior to uh, transferring time into uh, your payroll system. And then finally, um, I'll talk about some of the benefits about uh, a true integration 
uh, to your payroll system. And, and the focus of this presentation is really for users of Sage 300 um, and Sage 300 payroll. And we'll we'll talk a little bit about that, and we'll even show that in in our power in our uh, software presentation. So, um, if with regards to time clock hardware for those companies who do require some sort of device uh, to clock employees in and out of work, um, we offer this device called the IT100 by a company called Iris ID. Um, this is a seven inch touchscreen display. Uh, and uh, with regards to biometric, it, uh, biometrics, it uses um, uh, iris and facial recognition. Um, and th the real benefit to having a system that uses both is that it's, um, it's able to capture part of your face and uh, also your iris. So the two system, the two types of biometrics sort of complement each other. And, um, and, and the benefit of that is, is that if you're wearing a mask or if you're wearing a hoodie or a cap or you grow a beard, um, the system's gonna read uh, part of your face as well as your irises. So the combination of the two in what's called fusion mode makes it just easier uh, for the device to recognize the employee. And it can be used in a non-contact um, mode as well so that you don't actually have to touch the device as soon as you walk up to it. Um, there's a, a, a sensor and a camera that, uh, that pivots up and down to uh, find your face. And, uh, and it does this calculation to figure out who you are and identifies you uh, as soon as it recognizes your face and, uh, and your iris. Um, the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the device also has an optional uh, thermal scanner as well. So uh, it's capable of taking your temperature uh, when, you, uh, when you are identified. Um, and you can set a threshold on this device that uh, prevents you from clocking in if you get over a certain temperature, like um, 101 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, so it prevents employees from clocking in that may have some sort of an illness or uh, a flu. Um, and then there's email alerts that could be generated. So if an employee does go over that certain threshold, uh, an email is sent to their manager, just notifying them that uh, this person has uh, attempted to clock in with a temperature of 102 degrees. So with regards to scheduling, um, we do have a shift management in our system, uh, which uh, is uh, more of a set it and forget it approach to scheduling. Uh, you can define shifts. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that, about that in our presentation. But we also have a, 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 an employee scheduling module um, where uh, managers or schedulers, schedulers can log in and uh, create schedules on a week-by-week -week basis. Um, it's browser-based. Um, there's auto-reoccurring schedules, so you can have the system generate the schedules on a, on a weekly or uh, bi-weekly basis. Um, you can assign a rotation to the schedules. Um, you can even um, allocate or allocate employees or schedule employees uh, uh, against jobs or projects or uh, departments or divisions or even uh, positions. Um, there is a approval, sorry, a request for uh, shift swaps and approvals. Uh, so if an employee wants to swap with another employee, you can you can have them do that as well. And um, it even does a, an overtime calculation um, while you're scheduling employees so that you can see what the hours look like in real time from the scheduling point of view uh, for regular hours and overtime and double, uh, double time as well. Uh, and, and for those companies who don't require employees to clock in or clock out or report a timesheet, um, we can have the scheduling module generate a timesheet based on the schedule on a weekly or biweekly basis as well. So the uh, the timesheet uh, allows them is browser based, of course, um, allows uh, employees to log in and uh, fill out a timesheet for their week or their pay period. It's very customizable. We can um, uh, add or um, uh, omit any of the columns that are not applicable to your organization. You can relabel the columns, you can reorganize the columns. So it's very customizable in terms of the look and the feel. Um, 
there is uh, the job cost allocation uh, that can be built in as well. So for those of you who are using Sage 300 PJC, we bring in all the project structures in from PJC automatically, um, as long as they're active and uh, employees can log in and um, allocate their time to uh, projects, phases and categories as well. Uh, there's uh, the accrual balances and availability in the timesheet so employees can see what their accruals look like. Um, and um, <clears throat> we do have integration to uh, the SAGE HRMS and Criteria and HCM uh, HR systems as well. So for those of you who are using either one of these packages, um, any time off taking can be updated and sent to uh, the HR system uh, so that uh, the HR application uh, has all the details with regards to any time off taken. And there is manager approvals, of course. So when managers log in, they can review their employees' time. Uh, they can make any edits and changes to the time entries. Uh, and there's a full audit trail in the system that'll uh, let administrators know when a time, a time entry has been made, who made the entry, uh, the, the, the edit, uh, the date and the time that uh, that uh, was uh, the, the edit was made and the previous uh, uh, value as well. So we have um, a, a tablet app as well. It's available on Android and Apple, uh, uh, iOS. Um, uh, if for those uh, organizations that uh, don't want any specific hardware, uh, we have this uh, app that can be installed on a tablet that can be mounted or placed in a, a department where employees can uh, clock in and clock out. They can do a department or position change on the app. Again, they can uh, allocate their time to projects and phases and categories in this app. Um, and they can also uh, review their timesheet and, and look at their schedule from this app as well. We have a mobile app, again, for Android and Apple iOS. Um, the uh, mobile app allows an employee to either do a timesheet entry right in the app or to use the app uh, like a time clock so they can actually uh, clock in and clock out. Um, there's also the integration uh, to uh, the projects and jobs that come from Sage 300, so employees can clock into projects, projects phases, and categories right from the app as well. We have geo tagging. So when an employee, if it's enabled, when an employee clocks into a job or clocks out, uh, sorry, clocks in or clocks out of work, the geo coordinates are recorded for each of those uh, entries and managers can review that in the, in the approval entry. Um, there's also geo fencing. Uh, so uh, you can actually enter in the authorized uh, geo locations for employees to clock in and out. And so employees will only be able to clock in or out within that geo uh, fence or geo location of the authorized locations. There's auto travel calculation. So if employees are going from one location to another, they all they have to do is clock in and out um, of each location. At the end of the pay period, our system will evaluate the gaps between uh, the different clock in and clock outs and it'll automatically insert uh, travel uh, tri travel time transaction uh, for those gaps. And uh, from the app, the employees can also request time off uh, right from the app, uh, as well as they can uh, view their uh, schedules. Okay. Employee portal, employees can log into the system from uh, any browser, any computer. They can look at their schedules um, and they can also look at uh, their schedules for themselves as well as their entire department. Um, so if they wanna do a, a swap with somebody in their department, they can see who's not working on the day that they wanna swap and request a, a swap with that person. They can look at their timesheet to see when they work uh, for the current pay period or previous pay periods. Um, there's um, schedule availability. So employees can go into this portal and uh, enter the times they're available to work uh, so that when managers or schedulers are looking to uh, schedule employees, they can see availability. Um, they can view their time off balances, their accrued time off uh, and how much time they have available in the current uh, calendar year. They can request time off 
and there is email notification um, so that when they request time off, an email is generated to their manager, um, notifying them that you've requested that time off. The manager can log in, uh, view their uh, uh, the request for time off and approve it or decline it. And then an email is sent to the employee notifying them as well. Um, and, um, <clears throat> Uh, and so uh, the manager can approve that and uh, everybody's aware of uh, the fact that, uh, that the approval is done. So talk a little bit about the integration. As I mentioned, we are fully integrated with Sage 300, uh, both the payroll and the job cost side, as well as some of the manufacturing um, uh, uh, add-ons for Sage 300 as well as the Sage HRMS and Criterion HCM uh, HR and payroll systems. Uh, information can flow in and out of these systems. Uh, we custom tailor the way the integration works with every implementation. Uh, if you create a new hire in Sage HRMS, that generally flows to payroll. And then uh, from payroll, it flows to the Manusonic time and attendance system. Um, and uh, once, the administrator, uh, you know, prepares payroll, uh, prepares time and attendance, uh, the data and time and attendance uh, to transfer it. It flows back into payroll, uh, and it updates the time card in Sage 300 payroll. And uh, we're going to demonstrate that in uh, the software demonstration. So we'll switch to um, the uh, software portion of the presentation. So. Um, what we're gonna do is actually demonstrate the integration working with Sage 300. So we're logged into the Sage 300 payroll system here, and we're gonna create a new hire in the Sage uh, payroll system, just to actually demonstrate the first part of the, uh, the integration working. So uh, we'll create a new hire here in Sage payroll, and uh, we'll call this person Peter Sage. And for those of you who are using Sage 300, you're familiar with this screen. Um, where Aaron's just going to fill out some uh, information that's required so that we have uh, we have the we're able to actually uh, onboard the employee here in payroll. Uh, while he's doing that, I'll just mention that <clears throat> first of all, when when we set up the integration to work. We can pick and choose what fields of information that we uh, need to flow into uh, our system from payroll. Things like, of course, the name of the first name and last name of the employee, the employee ID, uh, the um, uh, the pay group that the employee belongs to, the cost center that the employee belongs to. In this case, Peter belongs to the East Division and the admin department, um, and. Um, and so when we do an implementation, we kind of custom tailor that. We can even bring over the manager uh, for, the, for who Peter reports to. In this case, we're just using the manager. Um, and um, so when we do the implementation, we set it up to work on a nightly basis and to actually, uh, uh, our system will actually check the say 300 database to uh, see if there's any changes, which usually a nightly routine and, um, and so our system using the API in Sage 300 will look to see if there's any new hires or if there's any changes with regards to any of the employees that are already in our system. Um, so if it finds a new employee, it'll bring in the information uh, about that new employee. Um, and if it sees any changes, like for example, uh, maybe the cost center or the department has changed for this employee, or um, the pay group, or the uh, the employee was terminated, we'll make them inactive in our system. So it's going to update our system on a nightly basis. Um, if you create a new hire, like we just did right now, you can actually trigger that process to work uh, on demand. So we'll save this new hire right now. And then uh, we'll go to the integration uh, folder here and we'll say um, uh, send employees to Sonic. So we're gonna trigger that process and it's showing us that it has uh, transferred uh, two different records into our system and it's 100% complete. So this is the process that would occur on a nightly basis. Again, you can trigger this at any point uh, during the day 
if you just hired somebody and you wanted them to be able to clock in or out or fill out a timesheet. So uh, this is Sonic Web Enterprise, our application. Um, and uh, uh, again, it's browser-based. You can log in from any browser uh, and uh, uh, you log in with your uh, employee uh, email address and password. We're just gonna log in as an administrator so we can show you uh, all the functions um, but there are security groups in our system. So typically we would have an administrator security group, a manager security group, and an employee security group. And uh, the nice thing is, is that for each security group, the screen kind of changes depending on who you are, with what type of uh, security group user you are. I'll get to talking a little bit about the portal, uh, about the dashboard here in a minute, but we'll, we'll just go to the setup and the employee screen and we'll just uh, look at the employees. And uh, this is a list of all the employees in the system, but we can do a search for a specific employee by just typing in a name um, in, the, uh, in the name column and uh, we'll do a search for anybody that has a name Peter. And here's this employee that came in from Sage 300 that we just added, Peter Sage. You can see that the employee's user ID is there, their name, their email address. And again, there's, they're in the East Division and Admin Department and they're an hourly employee and they belong to the security group called Employees. So uh, that information is uh, automatically entered in our system. Um, and then the employee can start tracking their time, of course. Um, so before we go on to uh, time entry, um, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the, uh, this relationship between managers and employees. Uh, I mentioned that there is that link between uh, managers and direct reports. It's pretty simple in our system. You can make any employee in the system an, a manager or an approver of time. Um, and, uh, and, and typically it's done by department. So if you're a manager of the admin department, all the employees that belong to admin would be your direct reports and they'd be linked directly to, to yourself. And by doing this, um, when a manager logs in, they're only going to see, uh, the information with regards to their direct reports and not the entire company or organization. Um, but you can be a little bit more detailed with regards to that structure. Um, you know, once you create an approver of time, you can associate any employee in the entire organization with that manager. You can also have an assistant or uh, a backup person who does approvals uh, be associated with the same group of employees as well. And then we do also have the ability to have multiple levels of approvals. So if you have uh, managers who are approving time for their departments, you may want um, a director or a location manager or a supervisor to be able to oversee or uh, review the time entries for multiple groups. So you can have a, 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 a hierarchical approach to approvals as well. Um, I want to talk a little bit about shifts and scheduling. We'll first uh, bring up our shift uh, management. Um, so we have the ability to create these standard shifts in our system. You can have, create as many as you like. Uh, you give the shift a, a, a name, uh, a code name, and a description. And um, you define the days of the week that the shift is applicable to. Um, and and uh, you can also create a reoccurring pattern so that if there is a rotation on the shift, you can just pick a start day, pick the number of days that are in the, uh, the rotation, and then add the pattern for um, when the employee is expected to work as well. Uh, the other thing you can do with shifts is assign a, um, a, a range or a, a, a a grace period with respect to uh, if they're clocking in and out of these shifts. So um, you would first select the, the time uh, the time in and the time out, and then uh, an allowance uh, with respect to how late the employee can be without being docked any time. So that's a grace period. And you can assign a five minute grace period, a seven minute grace period, it's very flexible or no grace period. 
Uh, and then uh, once you do that, you can assign how much time the employee should be docked if they're late. So if you've assigned a, a five minute grace period and an employee clocks in at seven minutes past their shift start, uh, then uh, the employee will get, uh, in this case, the allowance or uh, uh, the allowance is 15 minutes. So they would be uh, paid only for uh, seven and three quarter hours on an eight hour shift instead of eight hours. Again, this is an optional thing uh, and it can be uh, set up on a shift by shift basis as well. Um, and with regards to shift management, uh, once you create the shift, all you need to do is assign the employee to the shift. And then our system will always know when that, that employee is scheduled to work or on shift. Okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about scheduling. Scheduling is a little bit more of a, um, a week to week or pay period by pay period uh, function. Um, and um, Essentially, uh, uh, when you, uh, you you would set up these standard uh, uh, scheduled uh, shifts in a system so that uh, you can make it a little easier to assign an employee to a, uh, to a schedule, uh, but you can also customize that as well. So when we go to the schedules um, and we want to schedule an employee, um, we'll just... Uh, Go to another date range here. And we'll show you how to schedule one employee. So the, um, the list shows the employees that are in my department. And all I need to do here is hit the edit button for the person I'm scheduling. And uh, again, from the drop down, as I mentioned, you can have those, uh, those standard, I guess, times. Uh, so that you can just pick those times um, and uh, you can schedule the employee on a day-by-day -day basis if you want to create a custom schedule or a custom shift for, for that specific day you can hit the custom button and then uh, define the start and the end time specific to that day so if you want to make a modification to a specific day um, the system will um, uh, calculate the number of hours in each day, and uh, it'll show you the total number of hours you've scheduled them for the entire week. Okay, and uh, you just need to save that. And then once you've done that, you can copy forward the schedules uh, to uh, the following week and then make modifications to the following week if you need to. You can copy schedules for one or more employees or all employees so that you're not having to recreate these schedules on a week-to-week -week basis if they are similar in nature. There's a scheduled um, report that you can run that will uh, show you what the schedule looks like. And, and um, we'll just quickly show you what that looks like there. And um, you can print this, you can email this, um, and of course, employees can see this when they log into their portal as well. So um, we want to go into the timesheet now and enter some time for the employee that we created, uh, that we entered, sorry, in Sage 300 and brought into our system. So we'll uh, go into the timesheet uh, under Peter and we'll pick Peter Sage here. And um, we're going to enter a week's worth of time for the employee so that um, we can actually demonstrate the overtime calculation working and the transfer uh, back into Sage uh, 300 payroll. So we'll add, add an entry. So if an employee was adding their own timesheet, this is what it would look like. They would uh, add a record, select the date, uh, and the start time and the end time of their day. And all they need to do is save that and it's complete. Now, as I mentioned before, the timesheet is very customizable uh, from a uh, end user's uh, perspective. Uh, you can go into the settings and add or uh, remove any of the uh, columns that are not uh, uh, applicable 
for your implementation. You can also relabel any of the columns uh, in the timesheet uh, and with your own terminology. Um, and so um, we've created a timesheet, uh, an entry, sorry, for uh, this person for one day. And we'll just make some copies. We have a copy feature that allows you to make uh, multiple copies um, on subsequent days. And we'll just make four copies so that we can have a week's worth of time here. So this is what the timesheet looks like once you've uh, made the copies for uh, the employee. Uh, we'll just add some additional time on the one day so that we can show you the overtime working as well. So the person has 12 hours on the Thursday. Um, and then, of course, you can see the total number of hours in the timesheet as well on the bottom. At, at the top, when you're entering the time, you can also see uh, the accrual balances here. Our system's capable of doing the accruals, uh, accruing time on a on a pay period, a weekly or a monthly basis. It's all very co uh, configurable. Um, and it'll show you how much time an employee has accrued, uh, what's been taken and how much is remaining as well. You can also see this in the portal as well. We'll show you that uh, as well. Okay, so we have a week's worth of time. Um, with regards to the approval or manager approvals, uh, this is what the timesheet looks like. If you're logging in as a manager, you can review and edit like we just did. We made an edit to one of the time entries. There is, an, as I mentioned, an audit trail in the system that'll show you when any time has been modified or edited or deleted. Um, and the report will show you, there's an audit trail report that'll show you who the person was that made the edits and changes uh, and the date and the time in the previous value. Uh, so if you're logged in as a manager, uh, you can approve the time. Um, simply by hitting the approval button. And um, it's going to change that number under the level column from 100 to 200. And this just kind of notifies us of the fact that it was approved. It's also a checkbox that's, uh, that's marked off as well uh, for the time entries. And, uh, uh, and if you do have that, as I mentioned earlier, a, a multi-level approval, by looking at that number, you'll be able to tell at what, at what level the time entry has been approved. Okay. So um, I also wanted to log in uh, to the portal to show you uh, what the portal looks like and some of the functionality in the portal. Um, so um, the portal is uh, very customizable as well. Uh, some of the things that we can do in the portal is uh, look at the accrual balances. So, um, you know, if an employee wants to know how much time they've accrued, or how much they've taken, and what's remaining, it'll all show there. Uh, it'll all show up there. Um, and they can look at the uh, timesheet. They're clocking in and out with a device uh, or a tablet or a mobile uh, device. They're able to see what their timesheet looks like for the current pay period and for previous pay periods. Um, and uh, they can do the request for time off in the request tab and come in here, pick the time off type like vacation um, and uh, just click on the calendar, the days uh, that they want off and the, not the uh, hours that they're taking off. They can stipulate a time start and end or total number of hours. And if they click on the calendar, it'll create these time uh, off request entries in the system. Okay. And if they hit the submit button, our system will send an email notification to their manager stating that, uh, that they've requested the following days off. Manager can come into the, into the portal, uh, review the pending time off requests, approve them, um, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the system will automatically send an email to the employee notifying them that uh, that their time off has either been approved or declined. They can look at their schedules here as well. The employees being scheduled on a weekly basis, they can come in here and look at uh, the schedule for the week or the month. They can also, as I mentioned earlier, they can look at the schedule for their entire department, not just their own schedule. Okay. So, um, so this is just a view. Uh, we can look at the month here, Aaron, if you wouldn't mind just switching to the month view. Okay, 
and uh, here we can see when the employee was scheduled. We can pick a department if we only want to look at a specific department. Um, and, uh, and if we hover over it, it'll give us a little bit more details uh, about the schedule and who the person in the schedule. Okay, so I uh, wanted to talk about the uh, dashboard. I mentioned uh, the da dashboard uh, earlier. Um, we have these widgets. Uh, so when you log in as a manager, you're able to see a few different things. These are sort of standard widgets in our system. Um, the first one uh, shows us what the current uh, situation is with regards to total number of hours for our department. It'll give us in the current pay period, the total number of hours by earnings code. Um, if you have regular and overtime, it'll show you the overtime. And if you have a double time earnings code, it'll also show up here as well. So what this is doing is this is calculating overtime in real time for the current pay period. So that you're able to see what hours look, what your hours look like for your department um, and what your overtime looks like um, uh, for, the, for the current pay period again. Uh, the second widget shows you uh, who's clocked in. So here are the employees that are clocked in and when they clock in. So if you want to know who's in, so log into the portal and this will show you that. And if the person is clocked out, it'll show you when they clocked out as well. And the third widget is going to show you who's absent. So if an employee has been scheduled to work or they're on shift to work today and they haven't shown up, uh, then um, it'll show you a list of those employees that are not showing up, have not shown up. We also have email notifications in our system so that we kind of custom tailor them for every implementation. And um, this is a good example of one that we create on a regular basis. So if you want to know when an employee is late uh, for clocking in on their shift, um, uh, our system can generate an email and send that to the manager notifying them that the following person or persons uh, have not clocked in for their shift. And then the employee can, the manager can log in here and get all the details. If there are any pending requests, uh, they'll be shown up here at, at the very top of the screen here. They can click on it and see who's requested time off or uh, a switch for uh, a shift as well. Okay. So um, we've added time for this employee. Um, I wanted to just walk you through some of uh, the pre-payroll processing, uh, as I mentioned before. Um, we'll uh, just quickly look at overtime calculation. We have a very robust overtime calculator in our system. Um, the benefit to calculating overtime in our system as opposed to payroll is that you can look at what the hours, um, you know, uh, what they look like before transferring or doing a transfer to payroll. Um, ours is a very flexible overtime calculator. We have this concept of an overtime calculation profile. And uh, once you create the profile, um, you can define what the hours, how the hours are calculated. Um, there's a threshold for the week. There's a threshold for the day as well. And uh, it'll even automatically uh, calculate lunch based on a rule as well. Um, you just define how, what the lunch break is and um, how many hours an employee has to work uh, before uh, they're allowed uh, a lunch break. So when you calculate the uh, overtime in our system, it'll run through all the employees and their profiles and, and uh, calculate overtime for each employee uh, as well as the lunch break. And uh, it's completely uh, automated. Uh, for all employees. And you can have as many of these pay groups as, or sorry, as many of these overtime profiles as you like. So if you calculate overtime differently for different groups of employees, then, um, then you can create a different group for each group, a different profile for each group of employees, sorry. Um, we also have uh, uh, a stat holiday calculator as well. Uh, so um, you can uh, come into this uh, function here and uh, notify uh, if there is a pay, if there is a stat holiday on the current pay period, the administrator simply comes here, uh, selects the date that the stat holiday uh, falls on. And um, we, we have the ability to custom tailor the pro, the, uh, the calculation for stat um, based on whatever rule you have or rules you have. We, during the implementation, we would configure that for you. 
And uh, if there's a stat holiday in the, in the current pay period, so before you run over time, you'd come here, pick the day that the stat falls on, pick the rate code that you want to use, like stat or overtime. Uh, and, um, and then also um, it will look for any entries that fall on the stat. So you can override any, any transaction. If an employee works on a stat date, you can pick the rate code that you want to use for that, uh, uh, for that day. Uh, in this case, we have one called stat work. You can use overtime or double time. Uh, so you just have to click the add entries button. It'll run through all the transactions in the pay period and determine who qualified for stat and enter a stat transaction for each of those employees that qualified. So we'll just run the overtime calculator and run as quickly as possible because we're running a little overtime here. Um, so we'll run the overtime calculator for this one week period for the employees, uh, including uh, this person, Sage, Peter Sage, that's in our system. Uh, so we ran the overtime calculator and then we'll just go to reports and I'm not going to run through too many of these reports, but I'll just kind of give you a quick glance at what the hours look like um, after you've run the uh, overtime calculator in here. And I'll just show you a summary report with some of the employees in these two different uh, departments in the East Division. It's giving you a total number of hours by earnings code uh, for each employee. Uh, and then it's totaling the hours by earnings code for each group and uh, an entire for the uh, a total for the entire company as well. So we can see Peter Sage has 40 hours of regular, one and a half hours of overtime for a total of 41.5 hours. Um, we can run detailed reports. It'll show you what the hours look like a, on a day by day basis. Um, and we probably have around 70 to 75 standard reports in the system. So I obviously won't go through them all with you, but this, um, this report shows you more uh, detailed transactions for each of the employees, the start time and the end time and the total hours for each day uh, and the earning code. Um, and then one other report that I wanted to show you is our punctuality report. So if your employees are clocking in and out of a time clock or a tablet or a mobile device, um, uh, our system will be able to track whether they're, uh, if they've been late on their shift. And we have this punctuality report that will show you, we'll just run this for uh, the entire year so we get some more data here. In this report, we'll show you how many times an employee was late. It has entries, of course. Um, and uh, so it's, it's going to tell you how many times they're late and how many minutes those late uh, minutes, uh, those late uh, uh, entries account for, and how many times they clocked out early and what the total number of minutes. So you can do this, you can run this report for the pay period, for the month, or the entire year. Also, a good report to run if you're doing performance appraisals uh, at the end of the year. So we've run the overtime calculator, we ran stat, uh, we ran some reports, data looks good. There's only one thing left to do, and that is to do a transfer back into Sage 300. So we're gonna switch back to Sage 300 and uh, we'll go to this function here that says import time cards from Sonic. And uh, we'll select the date range for uh, the transfer for this pay period, which is one week. And we'll click OK. And um, just one thing to note about the API integration, the Sage 300, and this is um, kind of an important one, but we use the business logic and validation when we're transferring information to Sage 300. So there's, there, the data has to be validated by Sage 300 before it's uh, imported. Um, and uh, uh, so the employee has to exist. The earnings code has to exist. Uh, there's got to be a time card for the employee. Um, once all the data has been validated, it allows the entries to be imported. Um, and if there's a problem with any of the data that you're trying to transfer, there is an error report that'll pop up and it'll show you what the problem is with the transfer. In this case, we've transferred seven out of seven employees successfully. So if we go to the Sage, sorry, the employee uh, time card for Peter Sage. So 
we're going to see the total number of hours filled in for this uh, for this pay period. Um, and here we, we have 40 hours of regular and one and a half hours of overtime. So the only thing left to do here as an administrator is just to run payroll. All the pre-payroll calculations have all been done in the time and attendance system. So it makes it easy for uh, the payroll system to uh, process the data. Uh, that's the end of the software presentation. Uh, I think we'll open it up to Q&A at this point in time, Stephen. Yes. Thanks, Dan. So at this time, we'll open up for Q&A. Uh, please write into the Q&A box or the chat option. Uh, we'll read your questions out loud and then answer. Uh, during the presentation, there was a few that came in. Uh, the first question that popped up said, uh, is it possible to integrate your software with other payroll softwares? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what I showed you was uh, API integration with Sage 300 here. This is part of the demonstration. Um, if you're using an in, in-house payroll, uh, an in-house payroll uh, software application, generally there is an API that we can connect with and create a, uh, sort of an import and export with. Um, at the very least, most payroll systems will have an import capability uh, so that we're able to generate an export in a file format that's acceptable to that payroll system. If you're using a payroll service provider like Sage, sorry, like Ceridian or ADP, um, they're a service bureaus, so they don't generally have an API to integrate with. Maybe a couple out there that do, but typically they uh, they'll accept an import uh, file, um, and, or they'll uh, they have the ability to import uh, a file. So uh, all we need to do on our end is just to configure a, an export file so that you can uh, upload that to your uh, payroll service provider. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next question: uh, We have multiple locations, but payroll is centralized at our head office. Uh, how current is the time clock data? Yeah, great question. So um, the uh, the data is communicated back on a real-time basis, typically. I see typically because if you're using a time clock device like the IT100, um, the device has to be connected to a network or Wi-Fi. Um, it is capable of, if the network goes down, it is capable of storing transactions internally, locally on the device. And when the network goes back up again, it realizes the network's back up and it'll push any transactions that it's stored uh, locally. But if you're logging in with an app or a tablet, or if you're filling out a timesheet um, through your browser, uh, the data is real time from any location anywhere in the world. Uh, we have clients that have employees that travel around the world to fill out time cards. And that data, once it's entered into the, the timesheet, is committed to the database instantly. Thanks, Dan. Uh, another question, uh, do you have the option to call in your hours versus using a mobile device? Uh, I'm sorry, to call in your hours? Yes, it says, do you have the option to call in your hours versus using a mobile device? Versus using a mobile device. Yeah, so uh, there's the ability to have someone, either a manager, a supervisor, an administrator, or even a payroll, uh, sorry, a payroll administrator to enter time entries on behalf of another employee. So definitely. And it looks like we had one more question that came in. Um, it says, uh, does Manusonic integrate with other Sage products? For example, uh, Sage Intact. Uh, yes, uh, yes. So we, we do integrate with Sage Intact. Um, we integrate uh, with, the, um, uh, with the employees and the projects. Uh, we're able to bring in uh, those that project information. Um, and with regards to payroll, it, it, it depends if you're using the um, uh, the ADP, uh, Sage Intact ADP system. Uh, that is a payroll service provider. And yes, we're able to pass time uh, transactions through an export file out of our system uh, to the ADP uh, or Sage payroll system. Uh, we're also integrated with the Sage X3 system um, and uh, Sage uh, 300 CRE for construction as well. Thanks, Dan. Uh, it looks like those are all the questions that came in. So I'll go ahead and wrap up. 
Uh, thank you all for joining us today. If you guys do have any additional questions, uh, please reach out to your Acumen account manager or email us at am at acumenfl.com. Um, our next webinar will be at the end of October. I believe it's October 25th. Um, and we'll be reviewing stage fixed assets. So please be on the lookout for upcoming invites. Uh, with that, I want to say thank you to Dan and Aaron for showing us how to automate your time and attendance for Stage 300. And we look forward to seeing you guys all on our next webinar Wednesday.